Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is January 27th, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, the FBI and the mainstream media is calling it a shootout. As one person is dead, an Oregon protest leader, Ammon Bundy, along with several others, are now behind bars after a highway confrontation with the FBI and state police. Meanwhile, some of the protest members are being accused of being agent provocateurs. Then, Barack Obama turns against Hillary and invites Bernie Sanders to the White House. Could this mean that a Hillary Clinton indictment is happening soon? God, let's hope so. Then, a new policy in a Massachusetts town wants firearm applicants to write an essay explaining why they need a gun. Really? All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented superfiltration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants, and hormones. Filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons, stainless steel construction, easy assembly, low maintenance, replacement filters are simple to install. And now, as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer, you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. The Oregon standoff has been a very tricky situation because while I do support people's right to assemble, I support people's Second Amendment right to bear arms, even open carry. Uh, the issue is that the assistance that was being granted to the Hammond family wasn't exactly uh, solicited, to say the least. And now we have the very unfortunate news that Ammon Bundy has been arrested and one of the protesters in the Oregon situation, I don't want to necessarily call it a standoff, but the situation has been shot and killed. Shots were reportedly fired after authorities stopped the protesters on U.S. Highway 395 while they were heading to a community meeting in John Day, Oregon, on the 24th day of the wildlife, wildlife refuge occupation. It's unclear who started shooting, although sources reported that Arizona rancher Lavoie Finnicum, who had gained fame for conducting a TV interview from beneath a blue tarp, was killed and you know definitely our thoughts and prayers go out to Lavoie in this situation and it's a he said she said situation at this point uh, some people saying that you no know, he had a almost a hands up don't shoot kind of deal going on other people saying that he rushed the officers so only time will tell and uh, we are hoping that the law enforcement will put out the uh, video of what happened very shortly and we also see people saying that hey it's time to end the Oregon occupation uh, we see this report from Yahoo News Authorities urging remaining Oregon occupiers to quit after killing. They say state and federal authorities are pleading with the armed men still occupying the U.S. Wildlife Refuge in Oregon to leave Wednesday. And I'm sure, you know, everybody wants a peaceful resolution. As I said before, you know, I definitely support people's rights to assemble, right to bear arms. But, you know, you got to pick the time and place to do that best. But now let's go to a video of Lavoy Finnicum in his own words, explaining what he was doing standing up to the federal government. Hello, everyone. My name is Lavoy Finnicum. I'm a neighboring rancher to Clyde and Bundy on the Arizona side of the border. I rode with his boys on April 12th when we went to go get his cows. And I feel I'd like to make this video to set the record straight, to maybe offset some very powerful voices such as Glenn Beck, where I believe that we've been misrepresented. The intent of our heart was not to cause harm or accident but we did intend to come and get the cows. We were told to leave or we would be shot, that we were in violation of a federal court order. We did not leave. Those were his cows. You cannot have 
a federal government sitting as judge upon a federal case, it's like the administration having Benghazi or the IRS investigated by themselves. A state court needed to be the impartial judge to represent. You cannot have a federal judge representing a federal case. It's a conflict of interest. We were asked to leave. We did not leave. Then they brought in SWAT to show us that they were really serious. We stepped forward a little bit, continued to ask for the gates to be open. They cocked their guns, charged their weapons, said that if we advanced, they would fire. We advanced. At this point, they realized that they were at least going to have to shoot us because cowboys on horses are not going to be pulled off and zip tied. You can't put a cowboy on a 12,000 pound animal and pull him off. So the only way they were going to get us off of our horses was to shoot us. Could you define for us what this means to you personally? Uh, to me, it's about my children being able to grow up in a free country. And regardless of what you think about what's going on in Oregon, Americans all around the country are very fed up with the government altogether. And then we see this article by Michael Snyder, Americans really, really hate the government. And he's talking about a CBS News poll. And they had an article saying Americans hate the U.S. government more than ever. And an average of recent surveys calculated by Real Clear Politics found that 63% of all Americans believe the country is heading in the wrong direction and only 28% of all Americans believe the country is heading in the right direction. So, and it's very interesting to me to see poll numbers like this when you consider how many Americans don't consider themselves to be political at all. You know, they may have a party or a candidate or a particular issue, but if you start asking them about more in-depth issues, a lot of them don't even know what you're talking about when you talk about NSA or domestic spying or any number of other issues. But it's not just uh, with the feds or the federal government. When you talk about federal agencies, you know, a lot of people, they may not like this political party or their candidate or whatever, but they do, you know, enjoy the FBI or, you know, the alphabet agencies. And now they're saying that the uh, support of federal agencies is at an eight year low. Eight years. I don't know how long has Obama been in office? <laughs> and to be very clear, I'm not up here cheerleading for George Bush. Could people hear me say something about the Obama administration? Oh, you're a, you're a Republican. And I'm like, no, I'm not a Republican. I can tell you all kinds of things about George Bush and his daddy and uh, Reagan and Iran Contra and uh, yellow cake lies and all that other stuff. So it's not anything particular to this administration or to the Democrats, I, I got issues all over. Let me uh, tell you that right now. But yeah, it, Americans really aren't very happy with the government. Now I saw this news story right here uh, about the doomsday clock. Now personally, I'm not a big fan of the doomsday clock when you consider how it was created by the people who made the, you know, the nuclear weapons, the atomic weapons. And uh, they, I guess they came up with a clock to go along with it, you know, because they saw that other people were starting to make uh, nuclear weapons as well. And they said, well, you know, we have to make this uh, this timing system. And now we see the doomsday clock, threat of oblivion pits humanity at three minutes to midnight, experts say. And this is the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. And they recently had a meeting and they decided that they're going to leave the clock as it is three minutes to midnight. Now, my view of the clock is it reminds me of kind of a retro version of the terror scale, whatever you call that, the, the color coded deal, the terror watch. And uh, you know, it's red one day, it's orange and the next day, it's green the other day, but nobody really knows, you know, because even if there isn't a terrorist attack, you could be killed in a carjacking or, you know, get shot at a liquor store, you know, have some guy kicking your door at three in the morning, any number of things could happen to you, even if you don't get attacked by a terrorist. So here's probably my favorite explanation of the doomsday clock, courtesy of a comic book. My father was a watchmaker. He abandoned it when Einstein discovered that time is relative. I would only agree that a symbolic clock is as nourishing to the intellect as a photograph of oxygen to a drowning man. So you're saying there is no danger? Even in a world without nuclear weapons, there would still be danger. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Manhattan. Yeah, and the thing about this is it's always uh, a nuclear war on the horizon or it's always World War III or I guess technically World War IV because uh, the Cold War was World War III. But yeah, I, I don't really get off on saying that, you know, nuclear war is imminent. Now, is it possible? Most definitely. 
they have the weapons to do it, not just us, all around the world, as many other things are possible. But I don't think it's something that's imminent or something that you should concern yourself with in the immediate future. And also in that uh, the book, The Watchmen, uh, the, the comedian, the character in the book says, if those nukes do start flying, all of us are going to be dust. There's nothing we can do about it anyway. So don't worry about nuclear war. I mean, if you have the ear of a general or somebody else who has their finger on the button, yeah, you may try to uh, keep them at ease. But just for the normal person out on the street, you can protest nukes and all that stuff. But if they hit that button, there ain't too much you can do to stop it. All right, now let's move on to some other news and talk about a possible nuclear situation at the White House as far as the candidates we have to choose from. It seems that Obama is starting to stray away from Hillary and is now embracing Bernie Sanders, uh, Colonel Sanders, as it were. And we see Obama turns against Hillary, brings Sanders to White House. Obama's invitation to the underdog presidential candidate, who until recently struggled to break free of Hillary's dominance, comes as sources reveal the FBI is ready to indict Clinton and are even willing to blow the whistle and go public with their findings if the attorney general does not press charges against the Democratic frontrunner. So seems like uh, they're trying to get all the horses in the stable ready. And that's pretty much what politics is. And that's really how I view these uh, presidential debates and all that. You know, it's uh, like Jesse Ventura said, he said, uh, politics is just like wrestling, right? You know, I hate this guy and this guy is this and that and he's a whatever. And meanwhile, you know, they go into bars together, hanging out and having steak dinners. And then they, they elect each other as uh, vice president or attorney general, even though they supposedly hate each other. And that's quite honestly my view of Trump. Uh, among other things, I'm just not very convinced that he is uh, a mortal enemy with Hillary Rodham Clinton. But the mere fact that he, by his own admission, invited her to his wedding. I've heard of keep your friends close and your enemies close. So I've never heard of invite your enemy to your wedding. But we'll talk more about Trump here in a little bit. But yeah, Bernie Sanders, uh, I'm not feeling the burn. I've talked about him here before. Uh, if I was 17, 18 years old, I may be attracted to the campaign promises of Bernie Sanders. So I don't really fault the young people out there who are really feeling the burn. But at the same time, you know, being much older than that, uh, over a decade older than that now, I understand that free stuff isn't free. And uh, I believe Bernie Sanders said, yeah, we're going to pay for your free health care by upping your taxes. You're like, well, how is it free if you have to up my taxes to pay for it? Like, yeah, that's they could call it free and affordable all they want. It doesn't make it so. Just like I can call this instead of calling it a necktie, I can call it an uh, elongated neck apparatus. It doesn't change the fact that it's a necktie. You know, you can call it a kinetic action. It doesn't change the fact that it's a, uh, a war or a uh, act of aggression. But they just use all these words and semantics to confuse you, the American populace. But... And so don't be confused by Sanders and Hillary. I don't think either of them are very good candidates. Personally, I can say the same thing for many, many Republicans as well. Um, you know, like I said before, if the election was to be held tomorrow, I'd probably go for Rand Paul, but he's having some trouble in the polls. And quite honestly, I didn't think Rand was going to get there anyway, not because he was a bad candidate. I don't agree with everything he says, but I think he's better than most people. But just because the fact uh, he's not establishment enough, you know, he's out there protesting wars and talking about NSA spying and uh, domestic police state and all this other stuff. And I don't think the establishment likes that. He's rocking the boat too much. He's uh, not in bed with the military industrial complex because for all these candidates, like I want to end war, just Obama, for example, you know, he criticized Bush in his uh, perpetual war design, you know, going into Iraq and all these other areas over yellow cake lies. Meanwhile, he's going into uh, Libya, he's going into Syria. Uh, Pakistan, Yemen, and he has the technicality that's like, well, I don't so much have boots on the ground, but he has drones in the sky blowing up wedding parties and all that. And that's how these guys skate by on their technicalities. Now, something that's very interesting to me, people so often say that nobody's coming for your guns. There are no gun restrictions. Nobody's trying to limit your access to a firearm. Well, take note of these stories. City demands firearm applicants write essay explaining a need for a gun. Now, notice. They're not kicking in your door and taking your gun. They're not, you know, doing some type of confiscation. They're, but they're saying you will have to convince us of your need for a firearm. Not because you have a Second Amendment, but you're going to have to explain to us why you need a firearm. A new policy in a Massachusetts town imposes a burdensome step to residents who want to obtain a license to carry a firearm. An essay exam in a $1,000 training seminar. And the guy says... 